Hey everybody, and welcome to my video on this really fun to use and surprisingly interesting camera, the Kodak Duaflex 2. This is a pseudo TLR toy box type camera. And what that means is that it, it's very basic, very simple operation. It's meant to look like and behave like a TLR but without all the complexity and image quality. It has no light meter. The shutter speed is about 1 30th, and they also have an instant setting, which is marked as B on this model, but sometimes called long on some of the models. The viewfinder magnification is about 55%, and the frame coverage is about 85 to 95%. Um, if we, you pretend that parallax error doesn't exist. It has a brilliant type focusing glass in lieu of a focusing screen. And what that means is that instead of having a screen down here that the image focuses from the, the viewing lens onto, it just has a couple of pieces of, of glass that focus the image so that you can see what's going on in front of the camera. The flash syncs at the shutter speed, but only with SM and SF bulbs, neither of which are made or really exist anymore. But here is the flash contact if you, I don't know. I, I don't know how you would even use a flash with this anymore. Maybe if you rewired it or something, but really if you're gonna use this, um, a flash should be a secondary consideration or a tertiary or quaternary. At any rate, there were two lenses available for this camera. There was the fixed focus 75 millimeter F15 Kodak, Kodak lens like this one has, or there was a focusable variable aperture Kodak or Kodar 72 millimeter F8. Um, honestly, for this type of camera, the fixed focus lens is a little bit easier to use than the variable focus lens, although the aperture of f15 is, uh, <laughs> it's kind of small. It's, it's, you know, might as well just be only using this camera in the sun. This was an entry-level camera really targeted for Boy Scouts, students, kids, people who are learning to use cameras, or people who just wanted to have a fun, easy to use camera. It competed with cameras like the Argus 75. Now this model, especially with the focus-free lens, is really a toy camera, or near as makes no difference, a toy camera. These were produced by Eastman Kodak in Rochester, New York, Canada, as well as the UK from 1950 to 1954. Uh, prior to this, it was preceded by the Kodak Duaflex 1. It was made concurrently with various brownies and retinas and other myriad Kodak camera offerings and followed by the Duaflex 3. So if you have your Kodak Duaflex, let's take a look at the different features and we'll see what there is to learn about this camera. So here we are on the front of the Kodak Duaflex. So you can see here on top, this is the viewing lens. This is where the light enters to be viewed by you when you look through the top viewfinder that we'll see in a minute. And here is the taking lens. Uh, if you have a model with a focus, the focusing ring is attached to the taking lens. And if you have that, that focusing one, then there's a, a lever for a water house aperture adjustment, which is down here on the bottom. The camera's back doesn't have a whole lot. It's got the red window here for counting your frames. It also has up here the film back release, which we'll see in just a minute. The camera's bottom has the hinge for the film back, as well as the tripod bushing, or it should have a tripod bushing on it. On this side of the camera, which is the right side when you hold it, here's the shutter release, and here's the film advance knob. 
Uh, this right here is one of the strap lugs. It also helps to hold this into the field case. On this side of the camera we have two strap lugs that help hold it in the field case, the flash contacts and the shutter mode, either 1 30th ish of a second instant or uh, bulb switch. On the top of the camera we have, well underneath this Kodak logo we have the flip up view screen as well as the actual well, the, the flip up view screen shade and the view screen. And then here is the film back release. So here we are inside of the camera. And here is the film take up spool. This is where the old used film spool goes so that you can load fresh film into it. It only takes 620 film. Here's the camera obscura where the light from the ta uh, taking lens hits the film. On the side we have a couple of film guide rails to help keep the film flat. And then we have a guide, a film guide roller here that helps the film unwind smoothly. This is where the new film is placed. Right here this, this uh, spring action fold out bit holds the new film spool. Here is the film camera's back. And it just tells you you got to use 620 film and then here's some some uh, other information specifically the camera does not take 120 film and how to use it and things like that so some simple instructions so while we've got this camera open let's load some film we're going to start by turning the camera upside down now here's our new roll of 620 620 film can't be bought anymore so if you want to use this camera you've got to pick up some 120 film, some 620 spools, and some 620 backing paper and manually re-feed the 120 film from the fresh 120 spool onto the 620 film, including taping it correctly. Um, it's, it's not easy to do, but I do have a video that's linked in the description that shows you how to do that. The new spool just clips in like this, and then you pull out a leader. Out to about here until the two arrows line up with the film roller. Now you would feed the leader into the take up spool and this is not always the easiest thing to do. There we go and we'll start taking this up. Now make sure that when the film, film paper goes on that it's lined up evenly. There we go and now we're going to close this and you just keep advancing the film until you see the number one. Some arrows, that's a good sign. Film type and the number one. So what this is telling us now is that we're ready to take our first frame on this film. Now if this were real film you wouldn't want to open up the back of the camera but I'm going to do that so you can see how this works. You can see that there's the one right there that one in the middle is the one we're looking at. That's the numbering system for six by six. This is 645 and this is six by nine. So after you take your picture, then you advance your film. And you'll see when the number two pops up in the next, in the window next, to let you know that your second roll, uh, image is ready to be taken. And each image is taken up on this spool here and this is taken off to be developed once you've taken all of your uh, images. After you've taken all of your pictures, you'll just keep rolling and rolling and rolling this and then you'll open up the back, seal this shut and take it off to be developed. It's pretty simple. So while we have the film loaded in here, let's go through the process of taking a picture with the Kodak Duoflex. So once you see a scene that you want to take a picture of, oh look at that, it's a lamp, that's fascinating. Uh, you line it up in the viewfinder here and then you hold this at waist level. Your eyes need to be about as high above uh, this viewfinder as the camera is right now and that's two-ish feet. So you hold it in your hands and then you either have it set to instant like it is right now and depress the shutter button or if you're going to do a long exposure something like a, uh, a waterfall movement photo 
you'd put this on a firm footing or on a tripod and then just hold the shutter button open until you've finished your exposure and then after you take your picture now you can take double exposures like crazy in this because all you've got to do to take a double exposure is hit the shutter twice the shutter mechanism is not linked to the film advance so this is a fantastic double exposure camera and then after you've taken the image you just advance to the next frame and there you go you're ready to go to take your third image you get 12 frames per roll with this camera after you're done you just close the top and go on so some notes about this camera 620 film hasn't been produced since the 1980s or 1990s so uh, like I said earlier check the video description link for links showing how to re-spool 120 onto 620 rolls here's a, a roll of 620 a 620 spool with some paper backing on it here's an empty 620 spool here is a 120 spool with paper backing on it now you can see that the 120 spool is a, a significant amount higher it doesn't look like much but in in camera terms this is enough of a difference to drive a truck through but even if it weren't the 120 paper itself is thicker by uh, enough of a margin that if you just used 120 paper to spool 620 you would completely muck up your camera's works so you do need to use 620 paper or trim 120 slightly to uh, to make it thin enough to fit onto 620 um, spools. So I showed you the 620 spool right here. Here for comparison is a 120 spool. And you can see that it's just a significantly beefier and larger spool with a thicker center core and thicker flanges. And the flange thickness is really driven by, by the center core being larger and how much um, how much smaller this overall diameter has to be to hold the same amount of film. Some of the models, such as the later family mo later in the family models, have built-in double exposure prevention, uh, which could be overridden with a lever on the shutter release. This one, like I said, does not. You can just take double exposures like crazy. This is, if double exposures are your thing, this type of camera is really a fantastic option. So if you want to get an idea of how old your Duoflex 2 body is, the bodies built before January 1953 say B for bulb on the side right here. Uh, Kodak changed it to L for long in January 1953. So this, this camera, which was produced from 1950 until 1954, uh, three of so it's 50 51 52 53 54 five years three of its production years it said b and two of its production years it said l so theoretically if you have a um one that says l there's probably a few fewer of them out there than there are of the b models at least five body variations of this model of camera exist and they seem to me to be based on trim level combined with production location. The models with the Kodar lenses, which is the upgraded model, can take very good photos. The Kodak lenses are significantly less capable. So, so while it is more fun and easier to use a focus-free camera like this, the Kodar lenses are significantly better if you want to try to take a good photo with them. A, a technically good photo, not just a, a, uh, an emotionally or evocatively good photo. Some design variations on the top leather exist. Um, mine, as you can see, has the insignia button up there. Some of them have a painted on logo and some of them have nothing. And this could be a factor of their production location or production year or both. And I couldn't find anything on the internet that really indicated what that variation meant, if anything. So there are a few things not to do with this camera. One of them is don't touch the shutter. It, it, specifically, don't take the camera apart enough that you can put your finger in the shutter. You're not incredibly likely to break it, but at the same time, these cameras are 60 plus years old as of this video's recording, and some of the components could wear out. Uh, there is a mirror inside of here, so if you have to take this apart to clean it, which isn't that difficult, try to avoid touching the mirror because it's surface coated and your finger oils will 
cause the mirror to tarnish, which will make it harder to focus or see what's coming into the taking lens in this camera. Uh, don't leave your camera in the in your car because the cold, if you're in a, a cold area, will cause damage to the to the bake light, which could cause it to crack. And in in the heat, the bake light will warp significantly. Um, enough so that your camera will be completely unusable. Also don't store these in a plastic bag because you can get fungus as well as moisture getting into the mechanism and, and ruining things. And also you can get mildew which is a smell that almost does not come out of any camera. And don't let your camera get wet. Even though it's not the most precise camera ever made, it does have metal components in it that could rust if it gets wet. So just remember that your camera is in so much as is possible for this category of camera, a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you have questions or comments, please leave those. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you have suggestions for other videos, uh, please let me know. And if I have the equipment and technical know-how, I'm more than happy to make those for you. And one last thing before we go, thank you guys for watching and take great photos.